Hello, Ronald. Hello, everybody. This is Ron and Hope Unfiltered. Real, raw, relevant. What you doing, babe? You Wouldn't look tell cute everybody today. How you lost weight. Oh my gosh, where did where'd that come from? I know you're so proud of it. You've been telling me all day, so go ahead and tell everybody. No, you told you me. You had some clothes. Some I went clothes. to Paris, okay, and then I came back, and you told me I look fat. No, I see you butt look like an Escalade. Ron. I didn't say fat. I said Escalade. And difference. I said, that is not true, that I have been losing weight. And you said, said that's no. not true, Hope. No. You don't look like you've been losing weight. No. So what does that say to a woman? No. You look fat. No. But, not the way yes, I put it at all, but go ahead. I got, some, me look I got some suits made. Mm -hmm. And so they came over this morning to do the fitting, and they're all too big. I told you. I've I lost told her weight. you were not extra large. I said, you're right. going to have to take all them up. I said, you're going to have to go back and sew them up and redo them. <laughs> I told that woman that. <laughs> she said, I have lost an inch everywhere. That's good. You're doing an Ozempic? No. I am not. I am doing moderation. Pushing the plate you back. You cut back on that fried flounder a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because me and Chase went to Cracker only Barrel. Two pieces instead of three. Yesterday, and I ordered fried flounder, listen, and a salad. I ate half the fried salad, salad. And they brought me two pieces of fried flounder, and I <laughs> ate only one. That is moderate. That is how I'm doing it. <coughs> okay, baby. It's true. It's working. It's working for me. So you've lost inches? Yes. One inch? Everywhere. Everywhere? Yes. Okay. You proud of me? Well, some places we don't want you to lose. Run. Is there any way to customize where we lose? <laughs> yeah, that's called liposuction. I won't do that. I heard it hurts. Okay. So. I heard it makes you like bruised up and takes yeah. a long time to heal from it. Yeah, I'm going to do, gonna do it. No. I'm doing liposuction. Mm -mm. One day. I don't want to put a wand in me and start sucking stuff out of my skin. I do. I really do. Why? I just do. But it comes back. It's not supposed to come back Fried in that flounder spot. Fried flounder makes it come back. That's how it gets there in the first place. Oh, then it Anyhow, comes back if you do it again. What are we talking about today? Talking about submission. Submission. No, we call it who's the boss, right? <clears throat> who's the boss? Sometimes I hear. Because people do fight about I'm, who the I'm boss is. What? I, I'm the boss. I'm not. Uh, I'm the um, head of this house. I am a part of the social media generation by necessity. <laughs> there is more than 50% about it I don't enjoy. But I do understand the generation that I seek to serve. And I do know the venue and the portal through which you have to communicate to them because that's where they're talking. Right. <laughs> There's a lot I'm just not going to do. I don't like the foolishness of it that preachers do. I don't like the stupidity of it. Um, I like content, but I know that's not what gets clicks. You don't uh, want to do a photo shoot a I, day? No, I don't want to do a photo shoot every day. I, you know, I like great Christian content. I like meaty stuff, but I understand the clicks is you know when you bring the bring them into the foolishness, but uh, the problem with the foolishness is, it it chips away, and people don't even realize it's happening at their respect of you, and they say, well, man, you're real, and man, that makes you more real. But the fact is, when you know about everybody's foolishness and weakness, what you don't know is you'll follow them up until a place it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But when you get to a place it's difficult. You know too much about them to believe in yeah. them on that level. Yeah. And that's the downside of it that people don't realize. And I told people, I said, I would rather be a guy that walks in a room. I would rather be a guy that's respected instead of popular. So I'd rather have you know a half a million followers and be highly respected than two or three million followers because I'm Just I do popular. dumb stuff all yeah. the time. Yeah. So I said all that to say this. I, I engage in it enough to just hear the what's the conversation out there? 
I'll do some YouTube shorts. What are people talking about? Yeah, I'll go, you know, I'll go on some secular podcast. Um, because of our West Coast stuff, I'll do some TED Talks, some Silicon Valley type stuff, Elon Musk type stuff. Uh, because of East stuff, I, East Coast stuff, more Bible Belt, I'll get more into what's, what's the church folks saying. So... I engage a little bit. I don't have a long attention span, so if something's 30 minutes, no I'll listen, way. I'll listen to it five. No way. You know, I just don't. And uh, when I hear the the younger people talk, not necessarily Christian, it can be just be secular, mm-hmm. about relationships, it's scary. Yeah, it's quite interesting. <laughs> I, I've just heard some some, well, you know, if I get married, my husband gonna and he just no go and I'm like, where did you get that? Right. And then I'll hear the same be true for the other side. And um and I saw some, you know, some I talked to someone just this weekend, a young adult, and she said, Well, I'll tell you what, my man's gonna be, he's gonna make this much money, he's gonna I mean, she just reeled off about nine things that was like, you know, well, you better go marry an AI guy. You because, and I never even <laughs> talked about that. I, we had goals. We, I mean, we, we didn't want to be struggling. And we, and Look, we didn't want to be We would build poor. together, not me get a perfect world and bring it to you and serve right, it to you on a plate. Right. And so when I hear, you know, the way, you know, don't 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 show too much affection because it teaches them that you love them too much and that you'll never it's be at risk. Craziest. And the, I mean, I hear stuff like this all the time, and I'm just sitting there saying, where is this coming from? Right. There's got to be a source somewhere. I heard to somebody out say, stuff. "Protect yourself, young couples. Protect yourself um, from losing everything. If you if you should get divorced, so automatically just start out with the prenup." I'm like, "What?" I'm hearing twenty year olds talking about prenups. Right. Number one, I have never heard that till the last five years. It's crazy. Yeah, I've never heard that. Le- that is. So the- you really just saying I'm going into this marriage expecting it to fail. Exactly right, and that that right there undermines the whole idea of a covenant. Uh, I, I saw one of they hope this woman. I forget her name. She was a Persian lady, and I and well, I don't looked. Call their name. No, on here. she no, she was secular, and she was had a huge following because I'd never seen her before. <laughs> And, you know, mine and yours are a story of restoration, and our whole message we preach to people is hang, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. There's something. If you can make it through, there's something amazing on the other side. That's our, I mean, we've, we've written books on it. We've yeah. done, this woman was, uh, if somebody, women are only attracted to alpha males. If she cheats on you and you're an alpha male and you take her back, you are no longer the thing that she's attracted to, ensuring it will repeat itself. And I sat there and thought about anything to get out of it that they can find. <laughs> and I'm like, and and so I sit here, and this stuff, I hope this stuff is getting 4.3 million views, yeah, 1.8 yeah. million views. So there is a generation that is eating this stuff up yeah. that is 180 degree contradictory to the Bible, to biblical. Yeah. Principles and teachings. Yeah. And so, you know. It's really just out for yourself. Now, well, we had, you know, we had homes that were very, very functional in, in the 40s and the 50s and up into the 60s. Then we had the sexual revolution. And at the sexual revolution, then we had the feminism movement. I get equal rights. I get them being able to vote. Yeah. I get all that. But there was this big move to take the woman out of the home. Yeah. And now downright disgrace her for being in the home. Almost, almost, you know, you know, shame you if you want to be at home and you really want to raise your kids. And I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, the guy that the the there's a there's a football player, at Kansas City Chiefs kicker. He's Catholic. I, I know you've been out of the, the nation. I think why this happened. You've been in France. And this guy went to his Catholic college to a Catholic group of people, very family oriented, and gave a very family oriented Catholic speech. And he is being really shredded. Talking about that they chose mm. for mama to stay home and raise the yeah, kids. Yeah. And that was a statement against yeah. women. That sends women back 50 years. And so I'm sitting here listening to all this. The divorce rate is climbing. I don't know. that All these are Google statistics. And the people, the, the 40-some percent that are not getting divorced, they say 71% of the women 
in the 40 some percent mm-hmm. are cheating and 68% of the men are cheating. So I'm sitting there saying, we have created a calamity because we have moved away from the simplicity of biblical function. Now, I want to talk, we're going to talk about, I want, and we can be funny and we can be comical. There's a difference between function and duties. And I'm going to talk about that. But Ephesians 5 marks out the way God wants a house yeah, to the function. Home, the home is just messed up. <laughs> we have deteriorated so bad. No. And I mean, we have talked openly about, you know, the mistakes we've made, how we wish we could go back and redo things, even raising our kids. Um, and you don't know what you don't know, truthfully. I mean, you know, when you're young, you're in your 20s, you're having babies or 30s, you know, you're you're trying to even figure out who you are. You figure usually out reproduce life. what you saw. Yeah. What you saw and what you experienced you usually reproduce. But you don't even know who you are at that point. So even then, trying to have a biblically based, if you're a Christian, home, home that honors God, a home that is healthy, it's difficult. We're not sitting back saying this is easy. That We are truly not coming as ex- experts. We're not saying it's easy. We're not experts. But we have learned some things. We've lived long enough. We've overcome some things. We've got things we wish we could have done differently. And one of the big topics, the big umbrellas that so many homes struggle with is is submission and the topic of headship. And, and I think it gets a lot of traction because it is abused so many times. Right. The, there's people who abuse it and, you know, use the, the umbrella of I'm the head of this home to make decisions or lack thereof. Head, headship is not a power trip. Right. Headship is a covering and a sacrifice. I think that is so, and you have such a great way of explaining that, that it's so true and so biblical. I'm going to sacrifice for my home and for you, and I'm going to cover my home, and I'm going to cover you, period. And none of those two are easy or attractive jobs. No, it's it's not, headship is not laying the <laughs> no. hammer down. And headship is not, I, I make get the to tell, decision. Headship is not, I walk in the house when I get home and start telling everybody what to do. Or not to do. And, and so I think we have allowed a secularism to take that and paint it as something ugly and archaic mm-hmm. and no longer a working in our modern society, which now giving us the mess that we have mm-hmm. and the breakdown of the family, which has had a terrible, terrible, Mm -hmm. huge impact on our culture, especially in America. I don't know about every other culture, but America, huge one. So let's just go right there. Ephesians 5, you know, wives submit to your husbands as unto the Lord, as, like and as, similes. Mm -hmm. He's not the Lord. But you want me to call you that. Uh, Abraham called Sarah Lord. Abraham called Sarah. I mean, Sarah called Abraham Lord and at our house. You know, you call me Lord, but everybody don't have to follow that. <laughs> no, I don't. You want me to, but I I have never one time called I got you a Lord. With I can't Lord on it. because he Lord is run. the Lord. Lord can't. Run. Lord Farquaad. <laughs> <laughs> so he sits there and and he talks about and I get I get to that. I said people. I said this is for the sake of function. Just like in the church, Jesus is the head, and he gave these gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, mm-hmm. you know, for the equipping of the... So there's there's an order to things. Right. Everything has to have order. If there's not order, there's confusion, and God right. is not the author of confusion. Right. He's the God of order. So the Bible is an ordering book. The 12 disciples were 12 people that were disciplined by Jesus. He brought, he reigned their life in and gave them these disciplines that caused them to be great. And so, that's my stomach growling. Uh, I need to go home and eat. No, before we go forward, <coughs> we have We're going to break ad. right here? Yes, right here, before we get into the meat of it. Song Finch. Yep. I love Song Finch. You remember the song I had made for you? Well, you know, we try to use all of our sponsors, but... Song Finch, you did a Song Finch for me, for me before I knew what a Song Finch was. That's right. I did one last year for Father's Day. <laughs> yes, you did. And then I did one a few weeks ago. Yes, you did. You sure did. You know when you're listening to a song on the radio and you just get that profound feeling that the song was written about you? Now imagine having the power <clears throat> to get that same incredible feeling. 
to someone that you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them, okay? Now, Hope made me one of these, and uh, I I am not sentimental when it comes to stuff, but I'm sentimental when it comes to Words. her. Words, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm sentimental when it comes to people and to her, and uh, it was deeply meaningful for me for her to do something like that. So you pick out those people would it be meaningful too, and you know who they are. Song Finch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life, the people you love, and it's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, anniversary, or just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now and lock in one of Songfinch's top artists, okay? Here's what I need you to do. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so that you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash Ron and Hope and start your song after you purchase. You'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming to your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash Ron and Hope, capitalized. Don't forget to share your song with us too because I want to give you this one more time. Songfinch. How do you spell it? S O N G F I N C H. Pretty much. Yes, but like it sounds. Songfinch.com. So here again, you know, like some of the others, one of the um, advertisers that we actually use their product so we can give you our personal recommendation for them. He says in this Ephesians 5, then I want to bring some understanding this, especially to young adults and young couples who are married or looking to marriage, you're trying to figure out how did God design this thing? And he says, wives submit to your husband as unto the Lord. So you have to understand that when it comes to direction, he who does not provide for his household is worse than an infidel. That don't mean he who does not get a job is an infidel. That word provide, the root word's vision. He who does not cast the vision for his household. I have a vision for my household. Right. I have trusts that I set up, and there's money we don't spend because we're trying to prepare for another generation. Yeah, I mean, even when we were in our 20s, Ron, you, I, college you funds. put $25 a in month away for— In a college fund, for, 25 bucks yes. in college funds to save up so they would have a college fund. I mean, you know, d- d- life insurance, which you have just started selling, and estate planning and other things, wealth management. She just got licensed in all this— because when we were doing it for our family, she just said, this would be something great to do for many people because it helps so many people. Yeah. you got to have a vision. But it's vision. He who does not have a vision for his household. I'm constantly, I'm, we're not where we need to be talking to my children about, you know, do you see yourself doing what mom and dad do? Yeah. Do you? Is this even something you want to do? And if you don't, what do you want to do? Yeah. We will help you in that. We want you to do what God's called you to do. So that when you're talking about a vision, I'm talking about someone who is charting a course. So in the family makeup, God has charged the man with charting a course. It doesn't mean that women don't have a say-so or can't help, but if the women are charting the whole course and the man is going nowhere, that is all of a sudden out of order because God made the woman to be a helpmate. Right. And like I've always said this. We can't she, help She somebody. can't help you do nothing. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've always been somewhat visionary, and there you've always been. I tell people the latest big thing we did was six years ago. I mean, life-altering thing is when we expanded to the West Coast. And I told people, you know, I somewhat, not dreaded, but I didn't know how to real conversation mm-hmm. was going to go. We had had talks about it. Yeah. But when I felt like we needed to pull the trigger, I didn't know how that was going to go. And you just looked right back at me really kind of emotionless and said, Ron, I'm going where you're going. Hopefully that came from years of building your trust. Right. That I've gotten it wrong, but I hope I got it right more times than I got it wrong. And so you trusted me enough to say, you know, and I'll when follow I, you. And when I failed, you usually aren't saying I told you so. You know, you aren't waiting for me to screw up so you can prove you're right all these things which hurt so many marriages. So here again, it's submission to the vision 
of the house mm-hmm. and the role you may have to play to make the family successful, whatever that role may right. be. Now, that's where people start arguing. Yeah. I hadn't got to that yet. Then it says, husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church. Oh, that's unfathomable love. That I can't even I can't even understand it for my own personal self. That is unfathomable. Self. I am supposed to love you with an unfathomable love. I, that you know, uh, we're still we have you know, theologians trying to describe the word agape, which right. is the love of God. God is love. Love with the love of God, your wife. Okay, let's go back to wife submit to your husband. If somebody that loves you like that is easy to follow. It's so easy. Because how did he love me? He <laughs> gave me He gave me everything. everything. He gave me his best. <laughs> he laid down his life for me. He he gave me freedom. I mean, he paid the price for peace for me, for joy Everything. for me. So for for my husband now, he wants to make sure I have peace. He wants to make sure I have joy. He wants to make sure I'm secure, that yeah. I'm taken care and of. We'll talk about the things you do for me, and there are, are a myriad of things you do for me. But I, let, let me tell you, let me just go for that. Okay, I know you love a clean house. I do. So... When I make my sandwich, what am I in there doing? Cleaning up. I'm wiping that counter off. Not because... I've made you do it. <laughs> you know, Hope's going to get so ticked off if I... That's... My wife loves her house to be clean. Why? Because we have people that could come over at any time. We entertain people. And I know how you want your house presented. Right. Well, it makes... it Not only that... <laughs> It gives me like a settling in my in okay. my heart, That's like what, in my spirit. See, like, these are the things that say I love you. Yeah. It ain't just, you know, you've you've done something terrible and can I love you through it? That's not what it's talking about. It's I understand the things that brings hope, pleasure, and I try to love you in that, that way. way. I, I know things that can be taxing to you. So I tried to pick up slack. I don't like washing clothes. I'm not as I'm not good at folding them as you are. <laughs> but you know, we had we had kids over uh, for Memorial Day, and we do have a pool, and we had at least sixty seven thousand towels <laughs> laying around everywhere. I I took loads of, underwear. before you got back there. I had washed two loads of In clothes. In bathing suits. Okay, that's not a normal duty, right? But it was sitting there. And you didn't want me to have to no, do it. No, at the end of the day, you're going to come in there tired, and then you're going to have to start doing it. So it's, it's, it, I hope would really appreciate it if I probably went ahead and just threw all these towels in there and started washing them. It's, I think you told me one time, I thought, no, I heard you tell somebody else, Ron is mindful of me. Right. He's mindful of me. You know, the scripture, <coughs> for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. For the joy set before him. What was the joy? It was us. He went through pain. But because I love you so much, there'll be times work. It's it's hard to love you. (laughs) It's hard for you to love me. It's hard for you to love me like Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church so much, we were the joy set before him. He endured the cross. Love what... Whatever you set before you gives you the strength to endure. Yes. People who cannot endure have nothing they're looking at. Mm. <laughs> okay, I have somewhere I want my marriage to go when we when we had an empty nest. I didn't want me and you to look at each other and have to be strangers. Right. Okay, I have somewhere that I want it to go when I'm no longer the man. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. There's going to be one day they're going to start looking for the next guy. I get it. I don't know how it'll feel. I don't know how I'll embrace it. I don't know how if I'll struggle with it or I'll be okay with it. I don't know. But I know it's coming. And so I'm already looking forward to what is my life going to be like because I'm not going to sit around and cry because I'm not the guy no more. What will our season look like yeah. then? So be- because of those things, we endure hardships, difficulties, and disciplines today because of what we want tomorrow. Right. I want to live a long time. I exercise. Um, I've, I've had 
a lot of my people lived a long time on both sides of my family, but I've had two close to me die early, way too early. And a lot of what I do, I just want to stay in shape because I was always an athlete. But another part of what I do is I want to be here a long time. I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy. So there's things I You have an apple cobbler. And I threw it away. This big. Yes. I don't know why you brought that home. <laughs> Because it was Memorial okay. Day. This big, but I don't know who made that thing. I don't know, Del- Deli or whatever, it was massive. And then I saw two half-gallon things of vanilla ice cream. Ron, it was Memorial Day when I had that. Okay. But we don't eat like that. So I came home, apple cobbler hot with mm-hmm. vanilla ice cream on top of it. Yay! Is the devil. <laughs> is the devil. <laughs> okay. I cannot tell you how many times after you had gone to bed. You were tempted. I wanted to stick a fork in that thing, and I didn't do it. Why? For the Is joy it bad set to eat apple you. pie? No. But I have numbers I'm trying to control. I have things I'm trying to do. I want to be here a long time. For so the joy set for before the joy you. For the joy set before you, you, you endure those things, and you discipline yourself. Now, wives... Let him cast a vision and be that support and help in whatever role. What if he don't cast a vision? What do they do, now Ron? You're getting, into, you're getting into counseling. No, what if the man does not even have a vision? We have a very... The Bi- okay, the Bible says if he doesn't have a vision for the house, he's worse than an infidel. Do you remember then the, what? the couple we were talking about last night at dinner we were concerned about? Yes. Case in point. She's an extremely ambitious woman. And he's a man who has done fairly well, but he's just, he's fine. He's casual. He's fine. I, I'm, why aren't you good? He, I'm good. He goes to work, comes home. <laughs> yes. Goes to work, comes home. And, and, and he's good with that. And he's, and he's peaceful, and he's like, no, nothing's good enough for you. The fact is, she's extremely ambitious. Right. And, uh, and that has been a great point of contention. I don't think a podcast can handle that. But the fact is, even if he's not, and even if he feels like he's not built that way, God did not tell the woman in the relationship to drive the vision of the family. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. Everything was fine in the Bible as long as Adam was feeding Eve. When that thing got reversed and Eve started feeding Adam, all of a sudden everything started spiraling down. You can't just casually let things get out of order because God has it ordered for a reason. Now, we got a few minutes left. Well, we don't have many. I want to talk about, for five minutes, how the Ephesians 5 is mutual submission. We talk about that in the marriage yep. conference. Yep. Wives submit to your husband. Husbands love your wives. And it goes into, you know, um, it goes into employees, employers. It goes into uh, parents. Do not mm-hmm. exacerbate your children. Don't frustrate them. You know, children, obey your parents. It's, so it goes through a whole litany of Give and take, give yeah. and take, give and take. But people are trying to make roles and duties biblical. Like, yeah. I don't wash dishes. That's not the man's job. Yeah, they're trying to fit <laughs> things into a category. Okay, now wait a minute. There's what, really no categories. Where'd you get that? Yeah. Well, you know, I can't help you rake leaves. That's, that's what the man does. Okay. I can honestly say that cannot be, to my knowledge, biblically supported. You're talking about the duties of keeping a home and a life. Right. I, you and I, we've done it together or whoever gets there first. Yeah. Just don't be lazy. I don't, you know, that, that's not my job. That's that's not what I do. That's, well, I don't, I hate washing dishes. I hate it too. I mean, I cannot stand, I don't know what it is. I'd rather take out eight bags of trash than wash one dish. I don't like it either. I, do, I just can't. But what stand if we it. both just said, "I don't like it. You don't like it. We're not going to do Yesterday, it." Yesterday, I mean, you had a load, and I had a load. Yes. We, but there's dishes in the sink. It's life. Yeah. It's not. I'm not touching them. I'm gonna let them sit there three days because Hope does that. I think that's you're, selfish. I think, that yeah. is not loving no, your family. I, and I don't think like it's Christ, realistic. Like Christ loved the church. <laughs> I don't it think is it's not. realistic. You know, I. Uh, there are things that may take more of a, a manly strength or, or, you know, something that I would never ask you to come help me with. You know, I was out on the, the deck yesterday moving around metal chairs. No, I don't want you doing that. 
you know, you had back problems, this and that and the other. I, don't, I would never ask you to do that. And, you know, you got things, you just take care of it and you don't ask me. But for the most part, duties and roles are not man or woman. They are shared. Even when you were breastfeeding our children, we, we were talking to a couple of night and they said, no, sir. I didn't know. She's get. I got up with the kids. He never got up. And I, and I looked right in that, the people we were talking to, I said, that didn't work in my house, buddy. And but, I I, said, but it wasn't no. because I made you. It was because agreed. you loved me. We agreed. I can't nurse a child. So when we hear the baby crying, I remember what we did. When we hear the baby crying, you, you start, go get the you baby. start situating yourself to set it, wake yourself up, sit up in the bed. I would go get the child and bring the child to you. Yep. And when it was finished, I would take the child and lay it back. But I mean, I can't do what you do. Women, you can do the other women, part. listen. I'm sorry. I got the best husband in the world. I'm sorry, y'all do not have what I have. I'm not trying to. Am no, I, but am I'm I coming across you, like that. No, I am telling you. I hit the jackpot. I I just think it needs to be shared. Hit the jackpot. And I hear a lot of young couples. You know, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's the my mom always did that at our house, and the woman does that. And I'm just going to tell you, what worked for your mom and dad in the '50s and '60s uh, may not work now. Life is different, especially if you both of you work. Most income, most houses were single income back then. Yeah. Now they're dual income houses, and that that just ain't going to make a family run. There's nothing going to get done. And uh, you and I both, you, you did for a while when you were raising kids. I call it cherry pick. You worked mm-hmm. and you was a mom. You know, you weren't grinding it out 50 hours a week, but you were doing things that we needed you to do within the ministry, but you were also mom. And um, so we just found a way to make it work. And I think that's what the way you have to approach it. Biblical submission and duties in a home, you can't take these duties things and try to make them spiritual no. and have a Bible argument over no. it. Raising kids, <coughs> doing life is a juggling act. It is just a crazy circus juggling act. And you just have to get in there together and I make it work. I don't know how work. you got it done without help, Hope, because I remember me and you both working together and still feeling overwhelmed. Yep. So, you know, the guys is like, I'm not changing no diapers. What? That when they, what, four or five, six diapers a day? You ain't going to ever change any? I mean, for four two or years? five or six. I mean, ten. ten or twelve, I don't know. And uh, I, I, you you know, you were changing them all day, but when I got home, if you was in there cooking and I saw the diaper dragging the ground, <laughs> you know, I don't sit there and say, ho, <laughs> come change the diaper. No. Pick, the, pick my baby up and go back there and change her diaper. Daddy's and it, home. It's not babysitting either when no. it's your own child. No, it's called parenting. It's right. called love. It's called nurture. And you know, you sit there and, and you do it. And I just, so, I just, not to, to drag our podcast out, but I wanted to let everybody know biblical submission. I hear a lot of fighting about just duties and roles, household roles, and they try to make them spiritual and yeah. fit them in here. It's The Bible does not support whether or not you cut the grass or your wife cuts the grass. Yeah. It doesn't support that. Y'all just figure out how to get the grass cut. Exactly. Cut the grass. Yeah. And and so those are the things. Those are out of what we did wrong and we've made our mistakes known to the whole world. Function of a house, Hope, I give us an A minus. I don't know. <laughs> I think we get an A. We got in there and worked together. We made mistakes, yes. But we had kids, but and we, our house was clean. Our house was always clean. Our grass was cut. The oil was changed. And we didn't always and, have a housekeeper. And we worked hard. No, we didn't have a housekeeper until our kids got older. I'm talking about in, when you got little kids just running right. all over the house, and there's jelly on the wall, and there's and my kids, my kids Capri had Sun on the floor. three meals a day. There were no dishes in the sink when we went to bed at night. No. And the house was at least straight. Yes. I don't mean baseboards wiped down, but the house was straight. Our because grass we did was cut. That. We, yeah, we did, we did those clean. things. And me and you didn't sit there and resent the fact that... We had to do it. He's not washing dishes, and I'm not saying, well, she's not helping me pull these weeds out of the mulch. We, we, those, I don't know. We just didn't do it. I just... it need, I need to go... Where are you going? I, I got to go get these weeds out of the mulch. 
What you going to be doing? You I'm know gonna, why? I'm going to finish up these ditches and I'm going to the grocery because store. Because you had a vision for our house. And I oh. think that's huge. You you can't, I think we're trying to, you know, stop the bleed, but we got to figure out why it's bleeding. It starts you, with that foundational yeah, truth. You had a vision for our home. You wanted our home to be excellent. You wanted, not just for show, you wanted to honor God. You wanted to honor the Lord in your role as a husband, as a daddy, and you had a vision for us. You wanted us to be better every every year. You wanted our savings to increase. You wanted our living to increase. You wanted our mindset to increase. And, you know, you didn't want us looking like crap in the neighborhood. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to tell you something. Now, that's a whole nother topic. You know how I feel about the way you look. Yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, you know. Escalate, so that's I a, do. Yeah, that's a whole nother story because, you know, I, I have always felt that way that I want people, I want people to look at you, and I'm, this has nothing to do with the way you're dressed or your attire. Yeah. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about diamonds and design. No. I'm, not talking, I'm talking. About, I want somebody to look at you and know and that say, you care somebody about somebody loves her. Yeah, know that you care about me. To look at your peace, to look at your, to hear your laughter, mm -hmm. to see the way you get along with people, to not see heaviness on you. Mm -hmm. I want people to look at her and say, somebody loves that woman, and that that means a lot to me because here again, Bible. The woman is the glory of the man. Yeah. Man is the glory of God. The woman is the glory of the man. And so these things are extremely important. And I just hope there's a lot of younger adults married or getting married that's listening to this. Don't take daily trivial activities and spiritualize them into, you know, the husband and the wife role. Do what needs to be done as a team and work it. You know, I think that, Ron, some people over-spiritualize it, but I think some people, ugh, how do I say this nicely? I don't think it can be. You you might pose it as spiritual, but the root of it is lazy. Just don't you want just to do it. You just don't want to do it. And how can God bless that? He because can't. then I could go on a proverb, book of Proverbs rant on diligence about how God blesses the diligence. And when you when you look at God... You God preached has, a whole series yeah, God, on that. God has some harsh things to say to the slothful. Yes, he does. He has some harsh things to say. He said, poverty will come on you like a thief. Like a thief. Like a thief. If you're slothful. And he says, slothful but the diligent... You and know, not diligent. But the, the diligent will be the blessed. The, the upright man will be blessed. So all, I, th I think, you know, here again... We don't have to sit here and talk about what we've done wrong because we wrote books on it. Uh, but some of the things we did right, we can sit here and talk about we did that right. It was always hope. It was always run and hope. A team. We were a team. It was always it was run and hope at church. It was run and hope at home. And that was why the time when our marriage was vulnerable, we had a whole host of people say, I can't say one name. Well, that, it's it's not run, it's not hope, it's run and hope. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the whole world knew we're a package. So we came into life as a package. We took on life as a package. Mm -hmm. We took on debt as a package. It wouldn't. You got to pay this off. Right. Okay. We have. How this can we help each we other have, pay it we off? We have this credit card debt. We have these school loans. Yep. So we're a we package. Fig we figured it out. Figured you had out. a vision. <laughs> You had a vision for our finances. You had a vision for how to pay it off. And so I know couples that live together and have jobs and don't even know how much money each other have. See, I can't in my wildest dreams Neither. imagine not jointly attacking a your problem. debt and your future. Right. I, I just don't understand. So hopefully what we have said, this isn't a rant. This is really wanting to help because... Um, we teach a lot more out of our pain probably than we teach out of our successes, but our teamwork has been a success. When we do things as a team, we usually come out better more than we come out worse, and we approach everything. I'll end with this one. When we knew everybody was coming over for Labor Day, where's the meat? You're over there stirring potato salad. There's no art. We didn't talk about it. 
You just start grabbing. Okay, I'm getting the cups. You're cleaning the pool. I'm on, I'm wiping off the table, and you're, you're in there. Up the you're pool. in there. You're, you're pulling out the chips. You're door dashing. We forgot yeah. this. You know, you just do it. And we had a great day together, a great day. And you know what? When everybody left, everything was cleaned back up, and we went to bed. And your house was, was in clean. shape because we had an unexpected guest pop through the front door yeah. who wanted to give us a housewarming gift. And so you weren't embarrassed and ashamed with food and crap and towels laying everywhere. Why? Because we worked it as a team. Now that seems so little and so trivial, but it's stuff Ooh, like this that's killing marriages. Oh, problems. it's killing marriages. People fight like cats and dogs over stuff like this. And, team uh, Carpenter. So let's do this. So we took you a little longer than normal, but this is kind of a hot button topic. So. I knew coming in today was going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah. We may talk about it some more. I'm going to let you end it. I did song Finch and everything, so you get the end of it. Real, today. raw, relevant. Run and hope. Run and hope unfiltered. And I'm glad you back like with me. Like this. Share it. Uh, tell somebody. Yeah, tell somebody. Download, Share it on subscribe. your Facebook, your However, Instagram. You know, whether you're YouTube or whether you're downloading on, on, on platforms, I don't care. But just let other people know about us because... We feel like we're kind of bringing you behind the curtains and telling you the life stuff. And so I want everybody to know, until next time, it is Ron and Hope Real Raw and Relevant, and we're also unfiltered, too. So we'll <laughs> catch you later.